Good morning, all. God bless you. It's good to have you in the house of the Lord today. Uh, happy Fourth of July. I hope that you are uh, happy and excited and free. I want to uh, mention something about the revival this week, which begins today, begins this morning, and uh, it goes into tonight and then Monday and then Tuesday. Uh, bring a friend, invite somebody, come on out. We're going to have um, we're going to have uh, some food after the service tonight, and then go in the parking lot where we will have fireworks. Now, the Ned Bollocks are, are experiencing a lot of uh, a lot of health issues, and I've been talking with the boys and. And uh, they basically told me that they are spending most of the time going back and forth to Houston. And they asked if we had a plan B. And, and yeah, we do have a plan B. It's not as good as plan A. It, uh, I, I, you know, what, what I do for Pioneer Camp doesn't even compare to what happens here at the church when we do our fireworks. But we're going to, um, we're going to do plan B. And I've got the fireworks. And, and uh, don't expect a, as long a show. But uh, we got some bang. And I think you're going to have... A good time so uh, come on out we'll have a good time watching those fireworks and enjoying uh, each other now let me say this about about the revival okay what 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 is the thing about revivals what happens in revivals revivals isn't a place where we come to be entertained uh, revival is a place in time where we come to be changed we come to expose ourselves to the preaching of the Word of God and mainly when we challenge ourselves we challenge our carnality and we allow our faith to override uh, our reason and ourself. So in this revival, this is an opportunity for you to receive and to feast from God. I want to encourage you. We have some anointed speakers that are coming, and they're going to challenge you. And and each each service, we're going to give an opportunity for people to respond. When I, when I look at Scripture, people responded to Jesus. When he went out and preached and taught, there was always a time where he would lay hands on people. He would heal the sick. He would cast demons out. He would touch people's lives. And they would line up and do everything they could to, to be closer to him. So I want to encourage you, when we have the conclusion of our services, we're going to give opportunity for activation, for you to respond in kind to what God will do in your life. Let me say this about myself, about my wife, about many people that I do know, that a lot of the most magnanimous things that happened to me spiritually happened in revivals like this, where uh, we actually responded after, after the preaching, after the music, and we came to be touched of God, not by me, not by anybody else, but touched of God, for God to minister to you. So I want to encourage you to be willing. I want you to encourage you to be receptive to God doing something in your life this week because it could change your life forever. All of us will die needing more from God. Let me, let me say that again. Every one of us will die needing something else from God because we're not capable in this state to receive everything from God because we are human, we are carnal, we are flawed. So I want to encourage you to receive as much as you possibly can from the Lord. Cause your spiritual ears to listen up, and then when you get the opportunity, I want to encourage you to uh, move and ask God to touch your life. It could be up out there, it could be up here, whatever, but whatever you do, reach out. There's an old song. Do y'all remember the song, Reach Out and Touch the Lord? Oh, my goodness. Reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. He's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. He's passing by this moment your needs to supply. So reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. This is one of the songs of my childhood, and we really believe that, and we would receive from God. I think Rhonda tonight is going to be praying specially for healing in people's lives. If you're sick in body, if you have issues or whatever, we're going to encourage you. to. We want to pray for you. We want God to touch your life. We want to activate uh, that faith in you that, that may God, God may touch you. It is God's will. You hear Ronald say this. It is his will that everybody be well. It is his will that we all be healed. And many of us aren't. Many of us don't. You know, Jesus constantly told the disciples that it was because of their lack of faith. Well, you know what? When it comes to that, my faith needs to restart too. So we're going to reach out and we're going to touch God as he passes by. Now, on July the 6th, in 1415, something happened that changed um, the church, Christianity. There was a Catholic priest. His name was Jan Hus, or John Hus as we know him. Um, he was martyred. He was burned at the stake for his reforming the church, his attempts to reform the church. John Hus never, ever intended to found Protestantism or to found the Brethren Church. Uh, it was founded out of his experiences. It was founded out of 
uh, his inspiration, but his, his goal was to change the universal church or uh, properly defined the Catholic church. He was a Catholic priest and he was killed. He was martyred because he wanted to bring songs into the sanctuary. He wanted every person to have a Bible in their own language. Uh, and there was many other things that, uh, that he was against that the Catholic church was doing that was corrupt. And by the way, those things are still wrong. And um, they killed him for it because they considered him an enemy of the church. And it is because of people like him, we have the religious freedom that we have. And our founding fathers actually included that in the second, I'm sorry, the first, uh, second amendment, God, in the first amendment to the Constitution <laughs> on freedom of speech. And today we want to remember uh, what he has done. Now, I am not going to add him into communion. I just don't agree at all that we should have a communion in honor of John Hus. I don't think we should have a communion in honor of Matthew Henry or, or Billy Graham or anybody else because there's one person that we honor communion with and that is Jesus Christ. That's right, our Lord, our Savior, and our Redeemer. So I wanted to mention in a, out of appreciation for what John Huss did, what he meant, means to the Christian church, he is the reason, his sacrifices are the reason that we have uh, the church that is more in order than, than the church that was back at that time. So I, I thank God for those martyrs. If you ha have never seen the Book of Martyrs, Fox's Book of Martyrs, I want to encourage you to get you a copy. It's not very big, but it is amazing what these guys that came before us did, how they died and sacrificed themselves for Christian liberty and Christian freedom. And even, they did, even though they did what they did doesn't mean that we have perfect liberty and freedom. The people that came and formed this church over 100 years ago, they were fleeing uh, religious persecution in Czechoslovakia. So it's still happening all over the world. But uh, we have more than they had back then, and I want to, to speak to that. Now, on liberty, I'm saying a lot of things before we start here, but this is very important. Liberty and freedom. The reason I wear this American flag is not because... I am a nationalist, although I love my country, I'm proud of my country, even though we are very flawed, we've got a lot of problems. I'm, found, I'm proud of our founding, which was on biblical principles. This is the reason I love this flag. And in this flag also uh, produces religious freedom, which there are people in our Congress that are fighting that. And I remember what the people did for my and your freedom and their, our liberty. I know that each and every one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence were marked men. Every one of them knew that if we did not win the Revolutionary War, they would surely have been hung together. Uh, at the worst, they would have been sent back to England, put in the Tower of London, and they would have been beheaded to be made an example of to all the other colonies around the world. So I am thankful for these men. Not only did they found our liberty and freedom, but they did it on the Word of God. And the Word of God is all through the Constitution. It is all through the, the, the writings of Abraham Lincoln. And I am very proud of that. I'm not crazy. I'm not losing my mind over three colors. But I'm going to tell you this. I am proud to be an American because of what we were founded on. Not crazy about what I'm seeing now. But there are still enough people in this country who love God and appreciate our liberty and freedom. And that is worth saving. And I know that God knows that too. So we do this today. We remember our liberty and freedom because... Men and women died for our liberties and our freedoms. Uh, Scripture tells us in Ecclesiastes that there's a time for everything under the sun. And one of the things not listed in that is liberty. There's not a time for liberty. Liberty has to be bought. It has to be paid for. And these men and women had to die for our rights and our freedoms. And there's another man named Jesus who came. And he died for our sins so that you and I could be free. And we have services like that to remember moments like that. A little later in the service, we're going to remember Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, and what he did for buying and purchasing our liberty and our freedoms. I hope, I pray that you're maximizing that. Amen? Amen. All right. Stand with me, please. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we begin our worship. Thank you for suffering me to say those things. I think it's very important that we never forget what this flag means and what liberty and freedom are. Let's pray. Guys, if you could bring me up just a little bit on my mic, please. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for liberty. I thank you for freedom. I thank you, God, for the rights that we have as Americans. And God, we come together here to worship, not in fear of the police or the state police or any government tyranny. We come here in liberty and freedom to worship you in spirit and in truth. We come to reach out to you, to be changed, to be touched, to be healed. 
and God, to grow in your grace and knowledge. So I pray that these folks here today, God, we would all maximize this moment of opportunity as we pursue you today. Be with us, Father. Touch us as we sing to you. In Jesus' name, God's children said, amen. amen. Let's sing to the Lord, Brother Paul. Are you washed in the blood, the most powerful thing there is? Have you been up to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? All your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin, and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Mm. Amen. Now this scripture reading is called Praise Him. This is what you have the right and the freedom to do. And I encourage you to exercise that freedom. Let's read the word of God together. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His acts of power. Praise Him for His surpassing greatness. Praise Him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise Him with the harp and lyre. Praise Him with the timbrel and dancing. Praise Him with the strings and pipe. Praise Him with the clash of cymbals. Praise Him with the resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. Glorify the Lord with me and let us exalt. That is your right and responsibility. Amen? Amen. The word of God. Let's remain standing. Let's sing together. Cleanse me, O Lord. Cleanse me. Search me, O God, and know my heart today. Try me, O Savior, 
siphon with shame. Grant my desire to magnify thy name. Lord, take my life and make self and pride I now surrender Lord in me abide O Holy Ghost revival comes from thee be seated. I hope that you weren't just singing that out of rote. I hope you were listening to words that you were singing. Cleanse me, oh God. If there's any wicked way in me, cleanse me, make me clean. Today we're having communion to remember the one who died for our sins, the one in whom salvation is found, the only name above heaven, in heaven, that we have salvation. Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, the one who came and saved me from myself, from my sin. And today I remember that. Today I respect him for that. And today I do show his death until he comes with my life. And as we receive this communion today, understand this is not something that you have to do to be a Christian. This isn't something you have to do to remain a Christian. This isn't something that we just be regenerated and just come out the other side faster. This is something we do because we want to do. It's something we do because we love God with all of our heart. And this is something we do because we obey our Heavenly Father. We obey Jesus in this example. As often as you do this, he says, remember me. I remember with several confirmation classes, I've often asked the question. I said, so why? Why? What is one of the major reasons we have communion? What are we doing? Can you tell me why? And, and often I, I, I get blank looks. I guess that's why they're in there, amen? And I get some blank looks, and I say, well, it's, it's on the communion table. You know? And they go, oh, oh. And I want to come in here and lift it up and say, in remembrance of me. Don't ever forget what Jesus did for you. And when we take this bread, we take this cup, we remember Jesus' sacrifice. We remember what he did above America. Above any other heritage, this is the most important period. All nations, all countries will pass away, but Jesus, his words will never pass away. His kingdom is an eternal kingdom, and it's not based on politics. It's based on redemption. So we celebrate that today. Now, before we receive this bread, I want to give you the opportunity, as we've done already through prayer and singing, to repent of your sins and to forgive others of their sins. I dealt with a situation yesterday. I was counseling somebody on the phone and how that they were dealing with a wayward spouse. And the spouse's issues were so consistent with someone who has been injured and has never forgiven the person that caused them injury. Friends, it is vital, it is essential that you forgive others of their faults, of their sins against you. It is vital because Jesus has forgiven you of your sins against him. And all of sin comes short of the glory of God. So we must forgive those who have sinned against us. 
But before we get there, let's ask Jesus to forgive us of our sins. If you'd bow your heads at this time, let's confess our sins to the Lord and ask him to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Heavenly Father, thank you, Father. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for redemption. God, I just place my life before you, and I thank you, God, for cleansing me of every stain, all my inconsistencies, my faults, my problems, God, the things that I have a difficult time letting go of. I pray in the name of Jesus that your power would give me the power to do that. I confess my sins. I ask for your forgiveness. Thank you, God, for cleansing me and making me whole in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> In the same manner, we also forgive others of their sins against us. This is very important. Most people have no problem asking Jesus to forgive them, but they feel that their righteousness is so powerful that they can't forgive other people. You've got to get over that, folks. You've got to get past that. So at this time, let's push these sins away from us. Let's forgive as we have been forgiven. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the power through the Holy Spirit to forgive others as I have been forgiven. I thank you, Father, for giving me that strength. And Lord, I exercise that faith that I have to forgive and to release others of their transgressions against me. And God, even when the devil comes and tries to remind me of these things, I need to remind him of something, God, that I'm free from that burden, that I've cast that on your shoulders. And in Jesus' name, I walk in liberty, I walk in freedom, so that I can pursue and accomplish my purpose. So, Father, I release, I forgive, I push away, I turn from the sins that others have committed against me. In Jesus' name and by your power, Holy Spirit, I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you stand with me, please. <clears throat> Again, it's not by your <clears throat> confirmation or baptism that qualifies you to receive this bread and drink this cup. It is by your faith that qualifies you to eat this bread and to drink this cup. We've all ex exercised our faith in repentance and forgiveness, and now we can remember what Jesus did for us. The Bible says on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body which is given for you. He says, as often as you eat this, remember me. This is the bread of affliction in the Passover. And this is what he was telling his disciples. I'm going to be bruised. I'm going to be striped. And I'm going to die on a cross for your sins. They didn't understand that. But by faith, they received his words and they obeyed him. Just exactly like you and I are about to do. So in remembrance of Jesus Christ and what he's done for you, let's partake of this bread together. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the same manner, he took the cup, which during the Passover was the cup of redemption. And he spoke of the cup of redemption. He said, this is the new agreement, the new covenant, the new testament in my blood. And he told the disciples, all of you drink from this. One of the things that John Huss fought for is the cup that everyone in the congregation drank from the cup. And he said, drink ye all from it. And today we remember him and we thank him for his precious blood that cleanses us from every sin. So take the cup with me and let's partake together. Musicians, if you would play, please. I want you to take some moments of your private devotions and let's just thank him in your own way for what he's done for us let's pray together thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you lord lord jesus i appreciate you i thank you for dying for my sins i thank you jesus for what you've done for me i love you lord jesus i worship you i'm not worthy god Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for liberty. Thank you for freedom. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, we remember you. <clears throat> we thank you for your death, 
that brought us life. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for cleansing me of all my sin and empowering me to walk in righteousness. It is an honor to be called your son. God, help me, help me to be able to represent you properly in my community. I love you, Father, and I thank you for what you've done. I remember you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen? <clears throat> Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> it's time for our children's message, so if our children would please come down at this time. Hey. Oops. Hey, buddy. Good morning. How's everybody this morning? Good morning, Caroline. How are you? Good to have y'all here. Today is a special day in the birth of our country. Anybody know what today is called? Besides the 4th of July. Independence Day, absolutely. I brought with me a flag today because a lot of people fly the flag on Independence Day. But I want to ask y'all some questions about the flag. Does anybody know why there are 50 stars? on the flag? Very good, Delaney, there are 50 states. How about the 13 stripes, the red and white stripes? Cameron? That's a good answer, but not quite the one I was looking for. Do you know, Delaney? 13 colonies, 13, the original 13 colonies. Now I wanna ask y'all another question. The colors that are on here, red, white, and blue, the, the color white, we often talk about here in church as being the color of purity and the color of innocence, right? And that's why it's on the flag. The blue color is on this flag because blue is a strong color. Blue is a color of, of vigilance and perseverance. Those are kind of big words, but it, it really means strength. It means that the people who fought for this country and who wrote our Declaration of Independence were, were strong men and women who did so because of their faith in God and their faith in this country and their belief in a better life in this world. Now the color red, when you look it up, it says the color red is there for um, hardiness and valor. Does anybody know what the word valor means? Okay, valor is one of those that um, says that we're doing right by what we're doing. We are trying to do everything we possibly can for right for good. And the men who fought and the women who fought for our country many, many years ago, long before you guys were even, even thought about by your parents, long before that I was thought about by my parents, many years ago, many men and women died for the freedom of this country. And that's the word I want to concentrate on today is freedom. Because in scripture, there's a verse that I want y'all to try to remember, Galatians 5.13, says, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. That is why people fought for the United States of America, for the freedom of our country, for the freedom that we could speak, for the freedom that we could bear arms, for the freedom that we could worship our God. That's what our country is built on. But that verse goes on to say that the freedom is not just so that you can, can do what you want to do. It's not just about me and what I want. It says to enjoy that freedom, not for your own flesh, but to humbly serve and love God. Now, one of, a lot of men and women died for that freedom, and they shed their blood. That's what I think the red color means to me. The blood is shed. Can you think of someone else who shed their blood for our freedom? Jesus Christ, absolutely. Jesus died on the cross so that our blood would be mixed with his blood, that our flesh would be part of him so that we would know by the shedding of his blood that we could always, always be free. And we can't take that freedom for granted any more than we can take the independence of, 
of this country for granted. We can't take the independence that Christ has given us for granted. You know, whenever you think about Independence Day, think about how good it is to be an American, how good it is to be free. But that freedom has no comparison to the freedom that Christ has given us to live a life eternally with God. Always remember that no matter how important this freedom is in our world, that without Christ, there is no freedom. Without the death of Christ, there is no opportunity for us to live eternally with God. So even as you're celebrating independence and you're enjoying the fireworks and you're enjoying all of these great and beautiful things, remember Christ gave you that freedom by giving his own life. Does anybody want to pray today? Come on up here, Tammy. All right, I'm going to hold it. And you can pray, okay? Dear God, thank you for protecting us. And the earth is God from Jesus. God protects us from something dangerous of God and Jesus. Jesus died on the cross, and the whole earth is so in danger, but God protects us like Jesus. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Yo, keep you stand on the steps right here and face me. Congregation, <coughs> would you stand? Brother Joseph has the our reading. <coughs> this is our blessing for years. I would just speak this myself, but I think it's important that you join with me and let's speak these words over these young people. One of these days we'll have this memorized, but in the meantime, we'll read it with faith. Amen. Stretch your right hands out to these young people and let's speak. As parents and guardians, we pronounce the blessings of God. Prosper. May God give his angels charge over them wherever they go. And we as parents and guardians understand that children are a heritage from the Lord. And we will treat them as such. May God bless you and keep you, our precious children. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen? Praise the Lord. You may be seated and you guys may be treated. All right? Good deal. Whoops. It's going to be a good week, folks. It's going to be a great week. Things are going to happen that are eternal. Before I begin, I had an opportunity yesterday. Let me say this about these opportunities. You get to witness for Christ. You get to stand in the office of evangelists, um, of a share of God's peace and power. You never know where you're going to be and what's going to happen. It rarely happens in here. Most time it happens out in the marketplace. And yesterday I got an opportunity to minister to an atheist, and it was a beautiful, beautiful moment. It was uh, a time that was out of some personal pain that he was going through, but because for years I have talked with him and I have shared Christ with him and I've, I've, I've shared my testimony and um, to often a stone wall, I had an opportunity yesterday to minister, to speak, and to pray for. Uh, this friend of mine and I want to encourage you to be ready for those moments I remember I hung up the phone and I just exhaled a large breath because I wasn't planning on that I'd have been nervous all month if I'd have known that was going to happen at that moment the Bible says to be ready instant in season out of season always be ready again this is why you can't afford to miss opportunities for you to grow in God's grace and knowledge so I want to encourage you to be always ready to minister the truth to people and to share Jesus with them in his gentleness and kindness and his peace. And that is part of this message that I want to share with you today. Last week we talked about the freedom of speech, the First Amendment. And today I want to take that and 
apply it to the church uh, as us as Christians, how we should behave. We should speak up. God doesn't need a mute Christian, a Christian that's too shy and embarrassed and too insecure to be willing to step out there and stand for Christ. When all the world, the rest of the world doesn't like that kind of stuff, you should be bold and be ready to do it. God has sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for you, not just for your salvation, but you are an agent. The Bible calls you an ambassador on this earth. And we're supposed to be doing something with that. We're supposed to be sharing the gospel. We're supposed to be speaking up. But the devil has a system in place, and he's extremely effective, especially in the church, that he has silenced God's lambs. My message title is Silence of the Lambs, and this is what has happened all across America and even in the church. We have the right, we have the freedom, we have the liberty to speak up, not only for ourselves but for other people, but because of insecurities, because of fear, because of lack of knowledge and ignorance, we remain silent. And we're afraid to go out there because we're afraid of what people will think about us. I'm more concerned about what people think about Jesus Christ, of whom I am an ambassador. Now, everybody appreciates silence. And I'm one of the persons I definitely appreciate silence. I love silence, especially when I go into a restaurant. One of the things that I haven't missed because of COVID is loud restaurants. Now, maybe I'm by myself, but for some reason, when you get into a restaurant, everyone says, hey, before we go in and sit down, let's kick it up five notches. Let's talk louder. Sometimes I've been sitting there with Rhonda, and somebody beside me is just, I, 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 just yeah, I, I, want, I give them that look, you know, you, you know what I mean? You go with a quarter look, and then you do the half look, the three quarters. And, you know, you, you're trying to hint to them to hush because you're just trying to enjoy a meal. I can't, often I can't even hear my wife speaking and my ears are fine. But the music, they kick it up and that kicks everybody's conversation up. I love peace and quiet. I do. And I haven't missed the COVID loudness in restaurants. And you know what? If you're one of those people, shh, for goodness sakes. Take it down a few notches and just enjoy talking to the person next to you or across from you. But I enjoy that. But there's other things that, that will bother my peace, and I don't think that I'm alone. And uh, if, if you're with me, you can remain silent. You don't have to agree with me. But if you've ever been to a movie theater, people are allowed in movie theaters also. I seem to find the person with the largest bucket of popcorn whose parents never, ever told them to close their mouth when they eat popcorn. And you know what? The first one that goes in your mouth, and you, with your, that doesn't count. I'm sorry. I can still hear it. And I didn't pay money to go in there and watch a movie to hear you go through a bucket of popcorn that covers the first two-thirds of the movie. Amen? <laughs> I love silence. I enjoy peace. Snack chips. Oh, my goodness. The times over the years that I have been, been driving that bus, and, and there will be somebody get behind me with a bag of Cool Ranch Doritos. Number one, I don't like cool. I'm the only person on the planet that doesn't appreciate or like, uh, not sour cream, what's it called? Yeah, sour cream or ranch dressing, right, which is mainly. Now, I know, I know, I get it. You guys all love ranch. I concede that. But when you sit behind me and I can smell every chip, and, the, and, and this person, again, doesn't, that has never been told to keep their mouth closed while they're eating them, I hear every chip, I smell everything, and there have been times I wanted to turn around and say, how big is that bag? You know what I mean? <laughs> they always sit behind me with a bottomless bag of chips. I appreciate silence. Slurping drinks, same thing, you know? I mean, there, it is possible to take a sip of coffee without making all that noise. Boy, I'm really getting out here, aren't I? I, I love all of you. You've never made me angry, okay? But this one, this next one, I don't care what they think about me. The person that comes into a closed room or a closed situation where you can't escape, and they feel the need, because they've learned this talent as a child, to pop their gum. That loud pop, 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 you know, just absolutely sets me on edge. I don't know where they get that. I, I want to stand up and say, you know what? You probably think that we are all looking forward to this moment, that we enjoy hearing that sound. But all of us do not. Please wait till you get out of this room to start doing that. 
But I never hear them doing it outside. It's always when they have an audience. Amen? Amen. Yeah. So I appreciate peace and quiet. I appreciate manners. I appreciate all these things. Useless noise can be very, very annoying. But there is a productive noise that is out there. And this is the noise I want to address today to the church. There's a productive noise that we're supposed to make. That we're not supposed to be inhibited. We're supposed to be free and enjoy God's liberty and His freedom. Let's go to Scripture. Psalm chapter 100, verses 1 and 2. We read this. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. How many knows what the word shout means? Nothing wrong with it. It's not undignified. Scripture says to shout. And then it says, worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. We do that. And then in Psalms chapter 150, verses 1 through 6. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. How many understand that we call this a sanctuary? Amen? Sanctuary means safety. This is a place where it's safe to do these things. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His acts of power. Praise Him for His surpassing greatness. Praise Him with the sounding of the trumpet. I wish I'd have brought my trumpet. Praise Him with the harp and the lyre. Praise Him with timbrel and dancing. Praise Him with strings and pipe. Praise Him with the clash of cymbals. Praise Him with the resounding cymbals. Or one, one translation says the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How many of you just exhaled? Raise your hand. Yeah. If you have breath in your lungs, we are told to praise God. The Bible says the dead praise not the Lord. But we who are breathing, we who are living should praise the Lord. It is our duty before God because heaven does. And we on earth, us redeemed of the Lamb, these lambs should not be quiet. We should not be silent. But the enemy has conned us. The enemy has, has taught us and trained us to keep our peace in front of God. Where God doesn't want us to do that. God wants us to, to express ourselves, to love Him, and not to be ashamed of His glory and His grace. I'm going to tell you something, friend. Nobody on this earth can possibly be too loud for God. We have not done that. This productive noise is going to be in heaven. Psalms 47 and verse 1 says, Clap your hands, all ye nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. Psalms 47 and verse 6 says, Sing praises to God. Sing praises. And in case you missed that first line, Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. We should be willing to worship God in His spirit and truth and to make this productive noise. God's the one who said this, so it must be important to Him. It must be essential to Him for us to exclaim. Now tonight, when we are in that room over there together, we're eating, uh, I think it's hot dogs, is that right? Hot dogs, and we have some ice cream. It's, it's not going to be quiet in there. You're going to talk. I go, in, I go into funeral visitations, and I've often joked with Rod about this. When I die, when I die and people come to a visitation, if they do, I want you to have a little banner that you just slip over the side and says, hey, keep it down a little bit, all right? <laughs> Trying to rest here. I've walked in, and, and we all do this. We don't hold our peace when we go into to funeral homes for, for that visitation. People just start talking. We begin visiting, and that's health, helpful, and that's healthy. I get that. But we don't keep silence anywhere else. When we eat over here, these hot dogs and ice cream, we're going to enjoy each other's company. There's going to be talking. There's going to be laughing. You're going to hear it. It's going to be a time where we are, are expressing ourselves. But why in the world, when we come before the king of glory, do we keep our silence? What is wrong? Can that possibly be something that the enemy is trying to hush us? He didn't mind, he didn't mind us being loud for anything else. Watch the Dallas Cowboys beat the Philadelphia Eagles on Monday Night Football. My brother, my dad, and myself. And Seth, my oldest son, sorry, buddy, you weren't old enough to go to the game. You wouldn't appreciate it. But we were, in the, we were in the end zone, and the Eagles and the Cowboys were playing, the hated Eagles, you know, the big rivals. And the Cowboys were toward the end of their dynasty. They weren't as good as they were before. But Aikman was still out there, and a couple of the other guys were out there walking around with canes, you know, trying to stay upright. <laughs> and, the, and the Eagles ran the ball all the way to about the five or six-yard line. And uh, they, they uh, well, I know, I'm sorry, they scored a touchdown. And it all was down to the extra point. And there was one second on the clock left. And they got really, they, they had got to within one point of us. 
and they lined up, and, and we were just so dejected. I thought we came all this far, sweated all this sweat in this stadium. This is the old Texas stadium, and now we're going to watch the Cowboys lose, of which I had never done in, up to that point. I'd never seen them, still haven't. But I sit there, I thought, oh, boy, this is going to be terrible. You know, I'm here live, and we're going to watch a loss to the Eagles. And they missed the field goal. Actually, the guy mishandled the snap, and the Cowboys came and recovered it. And what happened after that to those 70,000 people was bedlam. Bedlam. People that were just standing there, not, not reacting very much, all of a sudden, they begin to jump up and down. They shouted. They clapped their hands. They raised their hands. They screamed. You know, and I, I, I was doing it too. My brother still swears that I looked over to a woman next to me and started kissing her on the mouth. That didn't happen. That was my brother. Didn't happen. But what I noticed was happening during that, that time of bedlam. We were all excited about something. We were thrilled. You know what? Every one of those players, they don't know me. They don't care about me. They go and cash their millions. Good for them. But they don't care if I'm dead or alive. And here we were praising them because they brought us some joy. Guys, do I need to make the point? Jesus Christ has given us everything, everything that we don't deserve. And of all things on this planet, we should worship and praise. You could go to any Aggie game. And you can see that same thing happening. Strangers standing beside each other. Saw varsity's horns off. I did that in Independence, uh, Independence Bowl. All of us did that. We did that in an Aggie game against Georgia. While Georgia was thrashing us, saw varsity's horns. And I imagine Georgia players are going, who's varsity? What are they talking about? Horns. We don't have any horns. We're bulldogs. But we were all excited about something. And not ashamed, not inhibited to express ourselves. Why is it this way? in the church. What's going on? Guys, it has to be the, the influence from the enemy that is stopping us and shutting us down. We should worship. We should praise. We should be very, very free in how we express ourselves to God. If someone is expressing themselves near you, don't let them think something's wrong with you, uh, wrong with them. There's nothing wrong with them. They're doing exactly as the Bible tells them to do. Express yourself. And if you've ever been around someone who's been saved for much, you watch how they worship God. They are much more dynamic than I am for sure because they've been saved from much we need to appreciate and understand that the enemy wants to silence the lambs but Jesus says come on lambs speak up come on lambs come to life heaven is not a perpetual memorial service heaven is celebration heaven is something beyond your and my imagination heaven is glorious heaven is incredible every Every gift that is here on this earth is magnified in heaven. And all the best gifts that God has ever given anyone are on display in heaven. All the arts, all the music, all the food, everything you can't imagine. The best of the best is in heaven. Jesse and I are going to try to do something. There's a, there's a chef. His name is Daniel McGrady. And he is uh, the former royal chef to, to Diana and the queen and, and Charles and all the royals. And he is now an American. God bless him. <laughs> and uh, he, he does a YouTube thing on, on all, the, all the recipes that he made for the queen and the royal family. Uh, we actually bought some of his spices, you know, I think Sandringham, um, Balmoral, and Buckingham is where the, these spices are from. And Jesse and I, we're going to attempt to make a dish maybe today uh, called Toad in the Hole. Is that right? One, one of the, yeah, it's cool. And, 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 and we're going to try to make something that is made for royals. I, I told Ronald last night for your birthday, I'm going to make her one of the queen's favorite desserts, which is, I think it's called double icing lemons, uh, double lemon drizzle cake. My love, my wife loves uh, uh, lemon cake that's drizzled, and we're, we're going to do that for her. We're going to make it, because if it's good enough for the queen, amen, it's good enough for my queen. If it's good enough for the royals, it's good enough for us too, Amen. You're a royal priesthood, the Bible says. You're a holy nation. You deserve the best. And in heaven, we're going to get all the best because it's going to be on display there. I don't have to mimic what the queen likes. And by the way, she has a, she has a chocolate birthday cake that he makes too, and the recipe is there. And I, I'm going to try it. I absolutely could try it because they're not better than I am. Amen? They're not better than you are. Amen? You deserve the best things that God has created. So, Exodus chapter 15 and verse 2 speaks to these things. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. David said, he is my God and I will praise him. He's my father's God and I will exalt him. 
These, these are the words of David. He's committing himself. He is allowing his spirit to tell his flesh, you're going to praise God. You're going to worship God because he is good and great and greatly to be praised. So this is scripture. So as Christians, we should all do several things. Number one, we need to take God seriously. I want to encourage you to commission yourself in your mind to take God seriously. This isn't mystic. This isn't mumbo jumbo. This is real. Take him very seriously. And then I want to encourage you to love God earnestly. Go after God with all of your heart and your mind and your soul. Pursue him. It's your purpose in life. It's why you breathe. It's why you exhale. And then worship him passionately. Worship him passionately because that's exactly what's going on in heaven. It would be terrible for you to have to be acclimated to heaven. Isn't that terrible? You're going to think, man, what's going on around here? What should be going on everywhere? Amen? Worship him with passion. Because don't tell me you don't do anything else with passion. You absolutely, yeah, I know you. I know all of us are passionate about a lot of things. I could go and pull some triggers in some of you and really, really get you. I, I, I will tell you this. I won't, I won't tell you who, but somebody said something about something that I said about what, how Jimbo Fisher had said it. And they said, well, you know, I'm sure I'm glad you finally said something about the Aggies and, and what he said, and that's, that's an Aggie thing. And I sat there looking at the person. I thought, oh, man, am I going to tell them? Do I let them go? You know, because it wasn't an Aggie thing. It was a Saban thing. <laughs> and I said, well, should I say it? I mean, should I say it? You know? And you know me, right? I didn't hold my peace. I told them. I, I'm an idiot. I shouldn't have said it. But we shouldn't hold our peace. We should always speak. We keep our peace, but don't hold your peace. I want to encourage you to be passionate about the things of God because he loves you. Now, let's go to Daniel chapter 10, verses 1 through 12. This scripture speaks of what happens when we talk to God. This is why we should never be silent. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel. This was a vision whose name was called Belshazzar. And the thing was true. But the time appointed was long, okay, as many prophecies are. And he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning for three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither, neither had any flesh or wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. He was fasting. And in the fourth and twentieth day, of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hidekai, then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man, clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Uphaz. His body also was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men that were with me saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone and saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me, for my comeliness was turned in me into corruption, and I retained no strength. He went limp before God. Yet I heard the voice of his words, and when I heard the voice of his words, then I was I in a deep sleep. Sleep on my face, and my face toward the ground. And behold, a hand touched me, which set upon my knees, set me upon my knees, and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee I am now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then he said unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou hast set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. Since the first day you begin to pray, the first day, not the 17th, not the 7th, not the, not the 13th, not the 9th, first day, when you begin to speak, Daniel, when you exercise your responsibility as a man of God and you spoke, you were heard. And God sent me to come here to you. Christian friend, even though sometimes the heavens feel like brass, it feels like 
Your prayers hit the ceiling and bounce back to you. We all need to understand that God hears us from the first moment that we speak to him. Daniel had been fasting and praying for 21 days, speaking to God, and he was heard on day one, and his intercession for the land was effective. So when you're praying, understand that your prayers are effective. That when you pray, when you speak up, when you talk to God, when you pray for others, it is effective and you are activating angels to come to yours or someone else's rescue. Be confident. Be confident that when you pray, God's hearing, He's listening, and angels are being activated to come and to minister to your situation. How many here, here have been activated unknowingly by God in response to someone else's prayers? God has moved on Rhonda and I several times to do things, to bless someone, uh, to give them something. or, or do. And, and you know, as this is happening, it's a challenge to our faith because we're thinking, well, I'm not really feeling it, but I just feel this urge. I think I need to do this. I don't know why. And the enemy says, you're just throwing it away. Why are you doing that? You know, keep it. What, you know, you're just going to throw something away that you worked hard for. As a matter of fact, these are God's blessings to you, and you're just going to turn around and throw them away. I remember the first time I gave more than $2 in an offering. <laughs> back in 1967, sitting in the back of the church, the offering plate came by. I had four bucks in my pocket. I worked hard for those four bucks. And I remember putting those $4 in the offering plate. It was everything I had. And my buddy, Ralph, said, oh, oh, why did you throw that away? What are you doing? And his mother even says, sweet, he's not throwing anything away. The enemy will always move on you that you're wasting things. But you very well may be an answer of prayer to someone else. God may be activating you to touch somebody's life. Have you ever thought of that? When God using, God, of course, is using, he's using other people to bless Rhonda and I's lives also. Rhonda may share one of those stories tonight. But friend, be confident that you are effective when you begin to pray. And God is answering, he's moving, he's doing things behind the scenes. So... Are you concerned about something? Are you worried about something? Speak. Say something. Pray. You don't necessarily have to go and find someone else to pray for you. You pray. You activate these angels. I can't imagine after 21 days and Daniel's fasting and praying, and he's getting, he's getting nothing. Nothing. He doesn't feel anything. He's just, it's just nothing. Then all of a sudden, boom, the answer comes through. Because God has moved on someone and, and he has sent his angels to fight their way through to your situation. So are you heartbroken? Speak. Pray. Do something. Stand up. Don't be silent. But speak. Are you in need? Speak. Don't say, well, you know, it's just, it's just the way it is and other people go through this too. And I just, well, you know, it's just my turn. It's my turn. <laughs> I'm a defeatist. In a parking lot. I am. I get in a parking lot. I drive around looking for a parking place. And I can't find anything. I'm looking around. And I think, you know what? I need to walk anyway. Anybody with me? <laughs> Not going to hurt me. I'll just, you know. And how about this? I'm just going to give it to somebody else. When I know full well, if that thing came open, I'd jump right in it, you know. I'd knock an old lady down and get that parking place probably, you know. Rhonda, on the other hand with her arthritis and things that she's dealt with for years now, she prays, God, I can walk from back to the parking lot, but I'd rather not. Could you please? We've even done, done skits. I don't know if, if Christine remembers this. She was, she was one of, we did a skit with the young people about that one time. But Rhonda, you know, I'm driving with her. We pull up somewhere, and <laughs> it's nine handicapped places and one open one, okay? That one's open when I'm with Rhonda. And when I pull into it, she says, you're welcome. Because she's done the knee work. She's done the prayer work. She says, God, I'm just going to, I thank you for helping me. And, and I start looking for places in the back of the lot. She's looking for the front ones because she's asked God to help her. Is that menial? Is that something you think, well, God's not going to do that? Last time I read that there's nothing impossible with God. Amen? I, I don't ever, don't ever get to the place where you think that God can't or won't do something. Ask. Believe. Pray. Speak. Don't be silent. Don't be silent. Oh, about your life, about your children's lives, or anyone else's life. I want you to speak with confidence. How many of you have ever seen Toy Story? Yes? Yes? Buzz Lightyear? You remember this? You're a toy! You're a child's plaything! Man, I wish I'd had that video. 
If you can't fly, remember this? He says, yes, I can. No, you can't. And he gets up there and he stands on top of that bedpost and puts his wings out and closes his eyes. <laughs> and with this confidence, he just launches off. And of course, you know what else happens? He gets caught in the ceiling fan. And the whole time he gets down and thinks that he had flown. I told Rhonda, I said, hon, sometimes you pray for parking parts. You remind me of Buzz Lightyear. You know, you got your eyes open and yep, there you go. But friends, pray, ask, seek. It shall be open unto you. When you ask God for things, he will move angels. He will activate the forces of heaven to come to your rescue and to touch your life. And whenever you have an opportunity, oh my, whenever you have the opportunity, like I did yesterday, to do something for God, there's going to be a thousand excuses why you can't do it now. A thousand. But what you need to understand is there's been people praying, and you might be the tip of that spear. God may have called your number and said, go in the game. It's your turn. And when you say, well, I can't do that. You know, I'm worried about what people think about me, or I'm just not good enough. I'm not like so-and-so. No. If God calls you, puts his hand on you, move. Speak. Don't be silent, because that's what the enemy wants you to be. Speak up for yourself and for others, but activate God's forces on your behalf. I believe the Bible. I believe when he says this stuff, you know, I'm just one of these kind of guys that I bought in. Amen? I'm all in on this stuff. I believe what he said, and we practice this in our household. Oh, my goodness. Satan is here to silence God's lambs. It's what he does, and he is extremely effective. I'm so thankful for men like John Huss, who spoke up. These indulgences, they're wrong. This isn't God. This is corruption. This is wrong. And he would get in Bethlehem Chapel, in Prague, Czechoslovakia, and he would preach these things with boldness. He spoke up. And because of his action, because of his courage, because he would not be silenced, he was killed. But his purpose wasn't killed. We live in that purpose today. The church has him to thank for his boldness, even unto the point of death. The scripture tells us that many of these martyrs did. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. We're almost done here. Call to me, Jesus says, and I will answer you. God says, you called me, I'm going to answer, and I'm going to tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. And then the next scripture, in Psalms chapter 17, and verse 6, I call on my God. I call on you. You're my God. For you will answer me. David's speaking with confidence. Turn your ear to me and hear my prayer. Hosea chapter 2, verse 21. In that day, God says, I will respond, declares the Lord. I will respond to the skies and they will respond to the earth. Psalms 86 and verse 7. When I'm in distress, David said, I call to you. Why? Because you answer me. How does he know? Because it's a practice of his to call onto his God. Do we call on him? Or do we just answer for him and say, you know what? This is something that's too small for you to mess with. I got this. Don't worry about it. No. Our God wants to touch us. He wants to meet our needs. He's looking for opportunities. He just needs the lamb to speak up for us to call to him. Bring your cares to God. Bring your fears to God. Bring your burdens to God. Tell God. Ask God for help. The musicians, if they please come at this time. I'm going to give you an opportunity to activate your faith. And what I'm going to ask you to do, stand with me please across this room. This is an activation of faith. You don't have to. It's not a dictatorship. And I'm going to give you the opportunity to come forward. This is something that we're going to be doing. We're going to be praying for people. We're going to ask you to just move forward. Because when I make my physical body move, when I, when I tell it to do something, that is the spirit taking charge over my flesh. But I'm going to ask you to come to these, this altar area, and I want you to bring the things you're worried about. I want you to bring the things that you're afraid of. I want you to bring whatever needs you have. You may have a friend. I had a dear friend of mine who's been in this building before. He's, he, he's shared with us before. And he has just been diagnosed with stage 4 cancer. And it's in his lungs. Never smoked a day in his life, but the melanoma moved through his lungs. And he is fighting for his life. I am going to pray for him today in these altars. I'm going to pray for my atheist friend today 
in these altars. I'm going to ask God to just keep going, keep going, keep going. I'm going to ask him to do the impossible things. And today, I want to encourage you to come as the musicians begin to play. And I want you to just come and find a place. You can kneel, you can stand or whatever. And there's no time limit. I don't have a clock on anybody. But I just want you to come and bring the things that you're concerned about and give them to God and leave them here. Musicians, if you'd play, let's go ahead and come to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. One of my favorite people in the Bible, David. David the king, the prophet psalmist, when he brought the temple back into Jerusalem, when he brought it in, the Bible says he danced before the Lord. And the Greek and Hebrew, the Septuagint, you know what it says? It says he danced face to face with God. Man, that's just like David, isn't it? He danced in God's face, right face to face with him. Guys, we need to be willing to speak to God, to activate his forces on our behalf. God's not too busy. His arm's not too short to touch you and to minister to you and meet you where you need. Amen? Amen. Don't be silent, land. Speak up. Get excited. Try to come close to the Aggies. Amen? Amen? Amen. They ain't doing nothing wrong. They're fine. They're fine. We just need to come up to what they're doing and give it to God. The Lord bless you.
May the Lord keep you. May his peace and power be upon you. May your tongue, your emotions be loosed in the name of Jesus Christ. And I activate you prophetically in Jesus' name right now to be what God has called you to be and not what the enemy has tried to groom you to be, which is silent. In the name of Jesus, wake up, activate, and come to the culture, which is heaven. Amen. God bless you. Have an excellent week. Tonight, come bring a friend. We're going to eat. We're going to ice cream. We're going to fireworks. We're going to be healed. Amen. God's going to do some great things in this building. Let's come get all that God has for us tonight. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed. Praise the Lord.